Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, episode 25, the big two five of your favorite League Fits podcast. We are Survival of the Fitted. I am intern Joe, aka the rookie and the vet. We have none other than Ian Pierno here. We have a very special guest today. Would you like to introduce yourself, sir? Uh, hi, guys. I'm Torino Wynn, uh, hailing from uh, Los Angeles, California. You know what I'm saying? Anaheim specifically. What up? What up? And for you guys that don't know, because it's technically our job to introduce the guest, Joe, um, oh, Torino sure. is you can just... Run that. I mean, he's a stylist, but you're also just like a creative anarchist in general. But you guys will specifically know him from styling all your favorite Kyle Kuzma looks. Ooh. Yeah. So that's that's why he's here. But a creative anarchist in plenty of other ways. Um, and we have like a lot that. to talk about. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I like that. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I play um, the anti-hero often. That's like my favorite character in any story, anime, regardless. Is like the... If there's an anti-hero involved, it's like that. So I kind of like embrace that. I, mess I love anti-heroes. That. I mess with that. Um, and before we get into, you know, the basketball stuff, the fashion stuff, um, <laughs> just got to like pay respect to, to Virgil who passed away. We found out yesterday recording this on Monday. Um, just, I don't, I don't think anyone, at least in my, I'm 24, like in my lifetime that has just had like the cultural influence that he did um, on not just fashion, but also like culture and music and all these other things. Um, yeah i just hate when like it really reminds me of like the chadwick boseman situation because it feels like you never really know what people are like it is really eye-opening like you do you never really know what people have going on behind the scenes and you should take time to like make conscious efforts to like love on one another because you never know like that's crazy to me how i was at the gym and i go on instagram and i see on league fits like virgil passes away and i'm like what the hell like this guy's like 40s that's crazy to me but yeah rest in peace to virgil man um, I mean, Torino, you've obviously been in fashion longer than either of us. Like, what kind of impact did he have on you? Oh, man. I, the thing about Virgil, bro, was he he was like the – he was like almost like the the guy that was able to take those – one of the guys, but like one of like the, the ringleaders of like that Kanye team to take Kanye's – thoughts and help formulate them into like a visual piece you know whether it was the cruel summer cover or the uh watch the throne cover you know down to you know like even my dark beautiful twist of fantasy i think as well and like that's like one of my favorite albums of all time but like you know just being he was virgil was the guy that showed us that it was possible man like for for boys of you know men and women of color you know it, it made us feel like we were like it, it was within reach, you know, it wasn't like anything that was like, right. As, as it was kind of standing, I guess it felt like, Oh, like we could build our own brands, but it has to be within streetwear or we can build our own brands, but it has to be like on our own accord or like, you know, we'll never get to that, to that level. Like the Louis Vuittons and the Dior's and the Gucci's of the world are feel like they're so like far away and far and few in between. But like, I feel like when Virgil did it, it was like, now, not to say he wasn't he wasn't the first black, you know, uh, designer of a luxury fashion house, because technically Olivia Bouscon is. But like Virgil was the first, you know, from from America and, you know, first of African descent. I know uh, Olivia actually is, too. He's from I think he's Ethiopian. I'm not sure. But, um, you know, Virgil made it feel feel like it was within reach for a lot of us and then inspired a lot of us. And he blended streetwear. He blended luxury fashion. He, he and he put it all into like this, this like almost like created this hybrid uh, image of what a silhouette could be and you know like he helped like you know people feel like included and I think that was the biggest thing was knocking the doors down and then keeping it keeping the door open and not gatekeeping I think that was like Virgil's ultimate I guess uh I don't know biggest b- biggest thing that he did for for a lot of us in the community was to make us feel like it was possible you know yeah in high fashion I mean like I mean, I'm sure there's so many stories you could bring up, but high fashion has definitely not always been the most inclusive environment and probably still isn't. But like one thing I've noticed in like the past 24 hours is like so many people have posted like screenshots of like texts and DMs with Virgil and just that, which just shows like how accessible he was um, to anyone trying to yeah. like get game. Did you see what Frank uh, Ocean said about him on his uh, story? Nah, speak no. on it. He was like, I don't remember exactly what he said, but you, you, I was, he was so amazed how he was able to go from previewing a runway show to DJing a DJ set 
and then flying across the country to do something else and then reply to texts and DMs and with so much energy and, you know, make you feel like you weren't getting like the short end of the stick. Like you always felt like you had attention. And I was like, yo, like, I feel you. Like, that's, that's, it's crazy. It's really crazy to be like, yo, like he was literally a superhuman. Like, I don't know if you read, if you read or watched any of his stuff, but like, bro, he was, he would sleep like, three to five hours a day max and would be on planes like nonstop, like just doing mad stuff. Like I, bro, I remember I went to fashion week in Paris and he went from, he went from doing the show, DJing an event that he was supposed to be like, obviously be a part of, but he was DJing as well. And then DJ at another event at the undercover party, like the same, that same night. And then <laughs> I'm like, bro, like, dude, you just don't stop. And then he's on a flight out, out the, you know, out of, out of town after his homies you're done showing you know so i'm like yo like he just doesn't stop and he was running two brands bro he was doing off-white and he was doing louis vuitton men you know what i'm saying so superhuman for real yeah I and mean, that's all that's all with like you know underlining health conditions that we didn't even know about which is insane man, he's a real one for not even saying anything either because like he could have like uh my uh, my girl nez and i were just saying that like yo he could have easily been like yo i'm going through this like pray for me and like make people almost mm -hmm. pity by his stuff but he was like such a real person that he was just like uh like yo like if you guys like it you like it cool you're gonna buy it you know and that's kind of like my philosophy if you like it you like it you know like i don't want no sympathy i don't want no you know i don't want no no charity i just want i want you to really if you really enjoy design and everything i really want you to you know appreciate what i've what i've created so i really love i love virgil for that man yeah uh, people hated on him for a while but that's because it was cool and it was like that's how the internet goes you know like yeah. the keep it to virgil's thing like to to misunderstanding you know people thought it was a funny thing to run with but i don't really... i might have had one joke i deleted it <laughs> but i was like bro i'm not gonna sit here and tear down another black man like i, I felt as soon as i think i, I think i tweeted something and I deleted it because I'm like, bro, I'm not going to sit here and tear down another black man. Like, especially after things get misconstrued, I felt like it was dumb. Like, I don't want to yeah. tear down. We're just trying to get to it. Like, bro, like what you mad for that someone wanted to donate 50 bucks? Like, you know, like <laughs> did you donate anything? Like, <laughs> right. Exactly. exactly. Did you did you get out on the front lines and protest without taking a fit pic, like with your sign <laughs> that you created for the gram? Like mm -hmm. all this stuff is for show, bro. <laughs> Yeah, all appearances. It's it's definitely like such a tragedy that like his life ended so early, but like his impact, yeah. I think, will for sure live on forever and ever. Yeah, um, he had so much more left in it in the tank to like to share and teach. You know, like yeah, he was that's he was very virtuous. Part. That's like the part uh, that like frustrates me. I hate when like black people with like platform and influence like pass away so young. It's like the same. Th it's just super like frustrating to me. Like knowing that the impact he had, but like how much it was cut short is crazy like where he could have been or the in influence he could have had times 10 in like 10 years from now that's wild to think about it's yeah it's like jordan leaving in the middle of his prime you know like yeah. he was bringing nike to his prime you bring louis vuitton to his prime of the generation like off-white was what it was you know and it's like you know whatever you loved it hated it or different you had to appreciate his where his mind was at like all at all times like conceptually from art perspective like his three percent rule of you know of changing something makes it something brand new like mm -hmm. at first i didn't believe it and then i like looked at it and i was like yeah you're kind of right you know but like the fact that you even sat down enough to think about stuff like that was was amazing so i was just i i read his i read his figure of speech book like three times so i really you know his tourist versus purist mindset is something i embrace another thing too like if you're a tourist in the space like you might love it like when you visit a place and you go see something and you're like yo like i'm a tourist like i go to paris and i'm a tourist you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. but like the people that live there they're the purists so like when people come and they're like i have a pair of ricks now i'm in the fashion <laughs> and they're like this and i'm like ah like do you know any of like do you know anything about anything in the fashion space at all outside of the fact that you saw like someone from you know on the internet wearing these rip ramones you know like yeah nah, you don't like you know like i don't know like when it comes to even like with sneakerheads like if you just got on dunks this year like i don't know like i'm not calling you a purist i'm calling you a tourist like you're, you're just now dabbling you're a dabbler you know you're not a purist mm -hmm. i'm sorry so i don't know that was like virgil's last runway show 
it's on YouTube. It's really fun, actually. So, and he's still they're still showing his last collection in Miami. Um, I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, um, I, I was supposed to actually be out there, but I have some things to tie up for uh, my other client with Phase Clan. So we're uh, doing a bunch of stuff out there. But I would have loved to have gone to be out there. But I'm gonna be there the third and the, through the fifth. We have two events out there. Gotcha. Big NFT joints. Yeah, I mean, we'll talk about that. Um, speaking oh, of your is. clients, I think something we definitely have to touch on is, and I don't think anyone has asked you about this yet, but do you want to talk about the pink uh, raft sweater that uh, Kyle Kuzma wore? Uh, I mean, I've, I have a bunch of opinions based on the internet. <laughs> okay, boom. What, what have you heard the most from the internet? Because obviously, like, I, I've read the comments too, so I know you have. Like, You know what's funny, bro? Like, at first, when I used to read through the League Fits comments, I used to get, like, I used to be like, oh, my God, they hate it. But it's mm-hmm. like, and then you, like, click on their page, and I'm like, ah, he still shops at Zoomies at 25. Like, <laughs> that that guy does not care what I do in the slightest. Like he's like, where's the t-shirt, the ripped jeans and the Jordan ones or the dunks. Like I need that fit or it's not an outfit. And, you know, and then like, I don't know, like some times I like, I don't know. I just look at it and I'm like, wow. Okay. Maybe, uh, maybe it's just, it's just like, they haven't, they don't have the the proper reference point or they don't have a, a fresh perspective on what their reference point could be. So, yeah. But I don't know. The craziest thing I saw was you need to fire your stylist ASAP because he he had or he, they have you looking crazy or something like that. And I find that stuff so comical now. Like I just yeah. look at all your comments and I laugh and I'm like and I'm like I almost like some guy uh, actually I posted something with Kuz wearing a hoodie and like uh, he's wearing murder bravado jeans and a hoodie, some yeah. mirror shoes. Yeah, I know exactly yeah, yeah. which one you're talking about. Yeah, of course. Yeah. The one that says look up on it. And uh, it was just so funny because someone goes, finally, <laughs> a normal fit. And I just laughed at it. <laughs> I never respond to no one on Lee Fits, but I thought it was so funny that someone was like, finally, a normal fit. And then one person goes, nah, bro, this shit's too normal. Like, <laughs> you need to go back to the other shit. So I'm like, bro, y'all don't know what you want, bro. I mean, I'm just going to give you what I, what I want, what we want, you know? So it's just mad funny. Yeah, no, I I actually saw I know exact which comment you're talking about, but it's funny because like you know because like you know they see the stuff like the Rafsimin sweater and they're like oh like who's gonna fire his stylist but like they're talking about it bro like I think the most exactly. fireable offense you could have for a stylist and like correct me if I'm wrong I'm new to this game, but mm. like is putting your dude in some something that's like just not worth fucking talking about. Say like, that one more time. Like I think the most like the worst thing you could do as a stylist is put your client in something yeah. that like no one will talk about. It just like, depends why? what they care about, you know, like if right. your client wants to blend in and just wants to wear the newest stuff, but not like, but no brands or nothing too crazy or like, they just want to be like, you know, like a uniform type, like those are the clients that I'm like, cool. Like, I'm glad to have you. I got love, you know, I don't have any of those right now, but like, I'm glad to have you and you know, I'm going to continue to get you what you want, but like, you're not gonna like, for me, I'm trying to create an icon. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to create like the next, you know, biggest Kanye West, you know, like of my generation, you know what I mean? All or nothing. hundred percent. Like, that's what I want. Like from a creative top to bottom, from visuals down to like what they do, you know what I mean? Like what's their day to day look like? What's their, what are they wearing? Like, how do they affect and move and shape and push culture, you know? And, um, if, and if, and if that person can't, you know, do that, then it's tough for me, you know, it's tough for me to like almost feel passionate about it. That's why like, I've actually turned down more people this last year, year and a half, because it's like, yeah, you might be paying me more than all my other clients, but it's like, it's not, uh, it doesn't inspire me creatively. And I feel like that's one thing Kuz and I have is that it's that consistent inspiration to like, it's like, yo, like at the end of the day, like if you hate on my stuff or you loved it, you had an opinion on it. And that's yeah. how I, where I feel the most comfortable. It's like, I made you stop to think about something enough to have an opinion on something. Cause like, not going to say no names, but like, you know, you see some of the things that on, on like leak fits and it's like, okay, like cool fit. And you just, you know what I mean? Or like, Oh, that's yeah. That's you might like it, but you're not going to stop. You know what I mean? Especially like this, like double tap or comment or like right. even look at it and be like, what's he wearing? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's like, oh, okay. Like they got, it's a status quo. 
Yeah. And, you know, like I'm trying to be as far from the status quo as left of center as possible. Like, I don't know. I feel like all that out of pocket stuff that makes you double take, like, bro, I wear skirts in public, dude. Like, I don't care. Like, <laughs> I don't care about no gender norm. Don't care about no what anybody thinks. Like, I might double. I might think about it twice, but it's like, oh, well, I'm already outside. Like, I'm not going to go change, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> like dude, and fashion then is such a personal coming. thing. You said what? I said fashion is such a personal thing. Bro, it's the first thing that we, it's our first form of language that yeah. that you see when you don't know someone. Like, if I look at you right now and I'm like, bro, like the first thing I look at him, like, yo, he wears his hair this way. He's got a purple shirt on. Like, mm-hmm. he must love purple and he, he must hate his natural hair color. Like, you know what I mean? Both are true. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like, well, if, 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 you know what I mean? Like, that's our first form of actual, like, language. And, like, the, I think it's universal, just like music. Like, yeah. if you like whether you have rhythm or not, like seizing or not, like you, you hear you hear music and you want to be like, like you you hear it and you're like, oh, cool. Like, I like this beat no matter what it is, whether it's like something from the depths of Africa or like Parisian music or it's something from, you know, some hip hop from out here. Like, bro, music is universal. That's how people learn our language. You know, yeah. like they learn it through listening to hip hop. Like I, I can guarantee you I can learn Spanish by listening to Bad Bunny. You know, what I mean, I might be a sad, you know, sad guy speaking Spanish because, you know, he'd be, he be going through. He's a little savage, but, you know, right. <laughs> Nah, you know? shit, like, I totally feel that. And I think with basketball fashion specifically, like, if you're not um, wearing, like, you know, your Puma or Nike or Adidas sweatsuit, like, it's because, like, you you want to be noticed. Because, I mean, think about, like, I mean, you've worked with musicians who are, like, performing. Like, there has to be, like, a little bit of, like, practicality in what they wear because they're moving around. They're doing something. Whether you're performing or you're going, like, a red carpet, you get dressed because you're going to an event. Like these basketball yeah. outfits, like these guys only wear for like the car ride there and then like that 30 second walk from um, the parking garage to the locker room. So like the whole point of dressing is to be noticed because if it was just straight like practicality, um, they, they'd be in a fucking tech fleece. So yeah. you might as well do your thing. You know what I mean? Like if you Agreed. dress in the tunnel, like it's because you want to like push a boundary. You want to be noticed. You know what I mean? In theory. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. I mean, that's that's how we all are, aren't we? We we wear things. I mean, people wear things on the Internet to get noticed. You know, like I wear I put things on people because, you know, I I wear things the way I wear. I wear it because I love I love wearing nice garments. Like, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like and when I put other people in things that make you think, wonder or, or whatever, that's my art. You know, I feel very like I feel comfortable in that sense of like creating that image like bro i feel like every time i style like someone i'm like pulling from like all my favorite inspirations and you know i'm like all right cool how do i create this cohesive look so when someone sees you it's your it's like your icebreaker like if my fit's not my icebreaker if if your fit's not your icebreaker to a conversation to someone that needs to meet you or that wants to talk to you or like what or whatever it may be then i messed up or you know what i mean like so basically i'm like you know, I wasn't the most beautiful guy growing up, you know, like I had to have a nice fit on. I had to have nice shoes on. So that was the way I was able to create, you know, create conversation and relationships, you know, not for what I had, but the fact that I put it together in such a unique way that people were like, what do you do? You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it is like, you know, they're yelling over like, you know, the this music at, at a, you know, at a bar or a club. What do you, what do you do? I love your outfit. You know, I, you know, I'm very, I, I, I like really do appreciate stuff like that because then I get to talk about myself without having to bring myself up because I hate talking about myself, you know, yeah. but I love being able to tell someone what I do if they're passionate about it, you know, if they're passionate about fashion, then I love talking about it. You love being able to respond to someone that takes an interest. Yeah, especially from an educated standpoint, you know, yeah. um, and I'm not going to I'm not going to attract someone that doesn't, you know, that doesn't know or or that doesn't, you know, I actually do attract people that don't know, but I actually the people that come from like an educated standpoint are the ones that I enjoy those conversations the most. But I also love educating those people that like, don't know that are like, I have a genuine interest in fashion and I really do appreciate how you put this together. Like I, like my old compliment that I get all the time is like, I could never wear that, but it looks so good on you. And (laughs) I love that, bro. Like that's my, one of my favorites. I feel that. How do you guys feel about that? When people are like, oh, I can't pull that off. I, I, I personally it's super feel like anybody could pull anything off, dude. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but. Yes and no. I, I mean, you're block. probably like 95% right. 
Yeah. I there's mean, obviously like, there's, there's like body shape and stuff like that, but I feel like, I don't know, like if you're like, I don't want to like be out here. I feel like if you're like six foot 180, there's nothing that you technically can't pull off. I don't see why you wouldn't be able to pull off any look. I don't know. I can't pull I off that mental part of that Kuz war. Put it that way. I can't wait. I that. think you could, dude. I think no, you could. No, bro, look, when I tell you, I put it on in the mirror right there and it's down to my shins on the on the waist and <laughs> the sleeves are dragging on the floor. I'm like, thank God you're the only person that can wear this. And, you know, and I was just I was just grateful for that because I put it on the mirror. I was like, no, I could freak this low key. Like, nah, bro. <laughs> like it's a it's 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 label, it's it's name in the, in the in the silhouette is a fantasy sweater. Like it's yeah. meant to be put in that sense. So like when people yeah. are like, yo, you you know, when they were hating on it and they were like, yo, this is like the, what, who's, what the hell is this? And like LeBron's commenting this, 80s commenting this, JR Spliff's commenting this. Like we, we like look at this stuff and it's like, yo, like I'm over here laughing. Kuz is over here like laughing because people mm-hmm. are like, we're getting a rise out of you. And like, we made a meme in real life without doing Photoshop. Like, I don't know if anyone caught that reference of like, of course, you know, people taking your sweater and blowing it up like that Balenciaga trend, like making it really huge. And then NBA yeah. Pinks does it. And then he was like, yo, for every 25 likes, like I'm going to make Kusa sweater bigger. And that thing had like 18,000 likes. I seen it. And I was like, yo, was it's perfect. Cause I was like low key nervous looking at it. And I was like, Bro, I'm about to like, <laughs> no one's going to like my stuff for like a cool, like probably like 20 minutes. And I was like in my house, like lo- not tripping, but I was like, damn, like whatever it is, what it is. And then like, I was like, I'm just going to own it because it, it, it is a joke, but I'm like, people really hating on it. Like no one's catching the joke. And the NBA paints pulled up and they were like, because like, you know, when I showed up the coups, it was like a, I showed him and I was like, bro, this is the biggest sweater I've ever seen and I've ever worn. Only you can wear the sweater. No one in the league can wear the sweater and make it look g- remotely good. And I'm not saying that as like a slight to anybody, mm-hmm. but like who else is 6'10 that dresses as a 7'4 wingspan that is still going to look big enough on, but like still look like fashionable enough for you to feel functional. You know what I mean? Right. Like. It's not I, it's not a Halloween costume. It's a meme. Like, and I feel like that's like the fun part about it. And like, when people started catching that, it was a more of a joke. Like, if you look at my Instagram comments, it's ninety five percent like laughing emojis. Yeah, and it's Which like I can't it. believe this is you. <laughs> so what what was his like initial reaction when? Because you, you kind of were talking about Kuz's like impression of it, but what was his like initial reaction like when you showed him like, all right, this is what I got. Like, some I so in this pink sweater. So I. Uh, I pulled up to his crib. I sent him mad photos. So what, what we do since he like moved to obviously DC because he got traded. Um, he basically was like, yo, we got to be more communicative and just like, you can't just pull up on me the day before the day of a game and be like, Hey, like I got some last minute things. It's like, no, it's like, yo, excuse me. I have, these are the photos. I can ship you things and I can bring you things when I'm going to be in DC and I'm in DC, maybe like once a month, uh, doing stuff with him. But like, you know, I'll bring like my, you know, my carry on bag is like a a walking lick, like not my carry on. Sorry. My checking bag is like a lick, bro. It's like, if anyone goes through and like, this might be terrible. Uh, I was going to say, this, you might not want to say it. Nah, it's all good. But like, bro, I, I mean, it's, it's, in, it's in print, so it doesn't matter. But I pulled up to, to like Kuz's house with like 15, 20 racks worth of clothes. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like it's just a, a checking bag stuffed full of clothes. And that wrap sweater took up the whole bottom layer of like a big ass bag. And I sent him photos and he was just like, yeah, you can get the sweater. Like, I'll try it on. And it didn't look as big as it was in the pictures as it was in person. So he like saw it and and i was like bro i don't know if you're down but like this is it and i'm over here like actually like this is it and i had to like do this because it was so huge and it was just so big and he was like bro i love this this is like satire like satirical and i was like yes thank you for understanding where i'm coming from like i'm like bro like i'm like you're going to end up on fit ain't nothing you're gonna end up like with with a bunch of negative comments wait torino i'm gonna stop you you're gonna finish this story but one thing i wanted you to do today is can you read the fit ain't nothing caption of any coups post uh bro honestly if you want to pull it up um (laughs) you gotta pull it up bro i'm not reading it you gotta read it 
Yo, Nez, can you bring my phone? Do you uh, do you want the one from the Dolce one? Or do bro, you want this, the- this, it's totally up to you. Nah, bro. <laughs> I don't know if I can say it on the on here um, so we 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 <laughs> our thing is we do a weekly if it ain't nothing caption reading but i think this week you should carry the torch and you can pick any coos post the Yo, funny that, thing the, in the, world. the rap sim is one is really good <laughs> nah, i think i think he kind of slacked on that one because because he didn't really i don't know i feel like he, he could how big that fit was no pun intended he could have gone harder 100 percent and, I, and I, hubba bubba has me crying <laughs> yeah i don't know i just feel like it like I don't know. Maybe he just, uh, I don't know. I feel like a lot of his other stuff got better engagement. But um, the funniest comment ever was when I did the uh, that one fit he wore, <laughs> he wore last year, the denim joint. And someone oh, said, yeah. he looked, the, he looked wait, like a the Dolce one? Game. Yeah, bro. Oh, someone yeah. said he looked like a bisexual GameCube. Game and I lost oh, it. my God. I lost it. I was like, yo, that's the funniest thing I've ever seen, yo. Oh, like, <laughs> But see, like, like that's yo. funny. Like, like Kuz Hilarious. is gonna be like, oh, like I can't fuck with Torino because someone said I look like a GameCube. You know what I mean? Like that's fire. Like, um, all right, Torino, you owe us a fitting, not the caption. No, bro, I need You're to stalling. tell you. I need to tell you, bro. The one thing that he uh, fitting nothing like unvalidated his whole roast session was was he when he posted the Walter Blazer and with the mirrors last year, and I was mm-hmm. like, you can't put that fit next to this fit. And, and then try and roast because everyone was in the comments was like, there's like probably like a good like 50 to 100 people being like, hey, yo, that second other fit was hard. Like you can't like yeah. you almost like lost my, your validity in my, you know, your roast. But uh, mm-hmm. you know, here we go. Fit ain't nothing. Uh, what's that? What's the Kanye do? Do, 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 do? Here we go. Um, I love that meme. Um, he- <laughs> 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 which one are we reading i want to be able to read along in my head which one are we reading? um it's the it's, it's you know we're gonna go with the closest one um because i'm not okay. swat, you know going all the way down but he says what in the pepto nan small is going on here coos brother <laughs> you look like an oversized piece of hubba bubba at league fits y'all uh <laughs> y'all dead ass wrong for posting this guy get it together patrick star uh second favorite spongebob character ever so i'm actually not mad at that, that comment who's yeah. your who's the first who's the first uh squidward okay good i was gonna say <laughs> bro all you right. got you you got squidward energy i'm not even surprised by that hey nah honestly bro like i just you know i'm not mad at it bro he's artistically You're like, inclined like you know what i mean he's got the clearing hand like if squidward <laughs> did like mushrooms i think it would be yo it'd be Tarina. you're like a more smiley squidward uh what's his uh i'm handsome squidward bro mm. <laughs> but like you, we can take it a step further I'm, actually fly. I'm i'm fly ass squidward you feel me yeah <laughs> i'm with that <laughs> <laughs> you know when he got his ass like beat up and this you know what i'm saying and then he comes out chiseled with the jawline i'm like bro i'm ready for a movie and shit <laughs> oh my god you know what okay I'm saying? um <laughs> Wait, so we, I hijacked your story about bringing the sweater, and you were like, he was like, "Yeah, I'll try it on." He tried it on, and he. No, but the thing is, I showed him how big it was, and he was just like, "Bro, like, I'm like, yo, like, you're gonna end up on League Fits, or not? You're gonna end up on, obviously, but like in the League Fits comments, you're gonna be terrible. The you know, like, and you're gonna end up on fitting nothing. That's like the the gist of what I thought it was gonna be. And then, like, I saw Complex post it. I saw Bleacher Report post it, and I was like oh my God, like I'm going to get flamed. And I'm like, am I ready for this? And I had to stop. I prayed and just was like, yo, I'm just going to live in the moment and like, and enjoy what I've done. Um, And literally I just kind of like reclined in my gaming chair at my desk (laughs) and was just like watching the internet burn for like 12 hours straight. Like I thought it was the funniest thing. And, you know, it was, it was just crazy because like I just didn't think it was going to be so many people having opinions and then Shade Room posted it. Um they made it all the way on NBA on ESPN, like literally bro, national. I, what? I, crazy. I knew I knew it was it was something when ESPN says what did they say, bro? I, I have I took a screenshot because my homie sent it to me and he was like, bro, I didn't even see the fit. I need to see it. And I'm like, bro, just Google, like Google Kuzma sweater and it pops up here. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but it, uh, sorry, bros. Where's, oh, it says 
Kuzma, Kyle Kuzma might have the f- pregame fit of the year uh, with this oversized pink sweater ahead of the Wizards game versus the Hornets. Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, that's that's hard. And I was like, bro, I love that. And then the next day, GQ comes to my defense and says, yo, the sweater's actually hard. And I was like, that was like a shining moment in my fashion career was like having GQ be like, a uh, simple minded people. I get it. Y'all might hate it. Or like, you know, it's got you in your feelings, but like, this shit's hard. And I'm like, like, what, what else can I do, bro? Like, I mean, and then like between us, like Raph, Raph's team reached out this morning and wants to send Kuz some clothes. So like, and I tweeted before I posted it that it was a chess move. And I didn't say, I didn't clarify what it was. I just posted it. I just let the internet do its thing. And I'm like, bro, like, and I just said, when I say checkmate, I'm saying it with my whole ass chest. Like, it's really, yeah. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a marketing major. You know, I went to school for marketing. I didn't go to school for fashion. I didn't do any of that stuff. So, like, in my mind, I use styling as a marketing tool to help build people's platforms. And mm-hmm. with Kuz, we are making him incredibly marketable to every fashion house that that is gravitating to him. You know, like getting him front row at Fashion Week is not enough. We need, you know what I mean? We want to take it to the, to the next level and, and really build. So, you know, if, if that's a, if I'm, if I'm doing a, I mean, like someone said they need a fire, Cooney's a fire stylist. And I'm like, bro, I got a raise. Like, shut up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, shut up. Like, Dude, <laughs> this, this fashion shit, like really is like an investment. Like I've, I'm like kind of new to the game a little bit, but like I studied PR um, in college. So like when I like try and work with guys, I try and think of like, like my first instinct is like, how will like the internet, like, will they engage with this? And like, that's the kind of shit I think about. And that's like what builds up a brand, which is why like Akuzma pays you. Like Kuz, like for example, I don't think like pays you because he's like, oh, I just want someone to get me flies because he's investing in fashion, which is going to open up other opportunities. Like we just know he's got like that Tiffany, uh, that Tiffany bag. Mm-hmm. And like, if he was just a small forward on the Lakers, he's probably not getting a Tiffany, Tiffany bag. You know what I'm saying? Oh. So it's I, an I hate to say it. I hate to say it, but him going to DC, I like the Lakers are my favorite NBA team. Mm-hmm. I don't have another. Sorry. Like, you know what I mean? Like I have other players that I love, like big fan of like Clay Thompson. He's from like, you know, my area grew up playing mm-hmm. against him in school and stuff. Uh, um, but like, and I love, like, I used to live in Oakland too. So I used to go to a lot of Warriors games. So big Steph fan too. Um, shout out to the Bay. Yeah, bro. Shout out to the Bay. You from here? Yeah, I'm, I'm in the Bay right now. Yeah. Where at? San Jose. Yeah. Checking out the bay, but <laughs> that's why I'm outside of here. <laughs> that's cool. why the Inst- <laughs> that's why the Instagram ba- bios is Bay Area and not San Jose. It, it's oh too- yeah, do your thing. Keep going. Do your thing. No, it's all it's all good. It's, it's a little too far south. I, I lived I lived in like um I went to Menlo College for two years next to Stanford, and then I went to Holy Names for uh, three years for uh, basketball and shit. But like, yeah, like when you get closer to like the Oakland and like Vallejo, like nobody really want to claim like that San Jose side. You feel me? S- Santana real good. cool though. But, um, <laughs> yeah, bro. Um, what was I saying before? Sorry. <laughs> I don't even remember. <laughs> we were talking about fashion being an investment and things like that. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. No, nah, talking about Clay Thompson. I, I was, for, yeah. But no, nah, but I was saying that like, it was really cool that I was able to like work with like my favorite NBA team, but I was like, yo, like this is so good for Kuz to go to DC and like flourish and be yeah. his own person. Like before I knew, like like Spencer and Dinwiddie and I are like actually like childhood homies. Like we were like mm-hmm. roommates at basketball camp and like like mm-hmm. I was get we were both getting recruited at the same time, not by the same people. By you know like <laughs> he over here getting recruited by D ones. I'm over here like I got like maybe like one or two D one interests like emails maybe. No, that's and- fire. Be proud of that. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not not proud of it. But it's like, you know, I ended up at an NAI to a D2 and, you know, I finished at a D2. It is what it is. You know, like, you know, God, God makes us, you know, go through the ways he wants us to go for whenever we got to go to. You feel me? But um, at the end of the day, I was just so glad that he was able to like, I'm like, bro, go make your mark, bro. Like, this is your time. Like, bro, be in the gym the whole summer. Like, go do your thing. Because like, I'm like, and he, we, me, him, Brandon, and Vin had this crazy meeting at the SLS before the season started. And we like laid out all the stuff that we're like, this is what we want to do from like, like who's got the basketball done. That's like on its own thing. What are we doing on the outside? Like, 
how's childhood dreams doing? How's like, how are we going to build these relationships with these fashion houses? Like, how are we going to build up his, like, you know, his artist portfolio? Like, how are we going to build these things up and just go from top to bottom? Like, what do we need? What do we want to do? And bro, like, it just, it was just one of them things where we just looked at it and we we're like, bro, we have so much potential in all aspects, you know, like, you know, he's, he's averaging damn near a double, double, like killing. He can, he's wearing whatever he wants and he's having fun with it, bro. And that's really what, what else can you ask for, bro? Like, you know, and that's the and main winning, thing too. bro. Like, you're having, you... what? No, yeah, it really does look like he's actually having fun. Like last year, I feel like there was like this certain sense of like expectation. I think it probably comes from playing with, lebron james and the lakers but like this season like even like him and spencer and they're like oh that's not how you throw a no look pass like that shit is not happening last year like he looks like he's having 10 times more fun and like you and see good. it in the yeah and they're hella good too the wizards Bro, are hella good they're, like, they're missing ray anchimura and uh what's the other player they're missing i'm drawing a complete blank right now um is it that dude who broke his leg or not uh, i'm drawing a blank i'm so sorry i don't mean to forget you um Thomas, Thomas Bryant. Bryant. Um, yeah, yeah, Thomas Bryant. Um, but yeah, bro, like they're missing like two key players. Like, and Ray started for them last year, you know? Like, mm-hmm. he has his own personal reasons. I don't know why, but like, bro, like they're not even like for for the you know sake of not missing an anime reference, like they're not even they're at their final form. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you ever watch Dragon Ball Z, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but that that like, bro, there's they have so much more to, to give and I'm just like, I'm just glad that Cruz is a big part of that and he's doing his thing and he's having fun, bro. Like, see someone smiling out there doing that thing, like, it makes it makes me happy. And it's like, you know, I see I see people on the internet, bro. Like, I see all the Twitter stuff. Like, bro, they lost the, the two games after the after they, he wore the sweater and, and there was a, you know, ESPN's got stats for everything. So everyone thinks they're a stat nerd now. And it's like, Wizards are 0-2 since the Coos pink sweater whatever i'm like and then my one of my uh you know old friends from uh from basketball was like this is all your fault and i'm like <laughs> how are you gonna blame me for how bad the team plays for on one night like bro like you was it lee be- <laughs> no bro i'm not gonna say no name he doesn't <laughs> okay, deserve God. it like i'm just like dude like you sound dumb like and i'm over here like and this bro like i don't know bro like people just think it's just funny and i'm like did you get all your three three favorites on twitter like was that so worth it like yeah <laughs> like like bro like yeah. i don't know i broke the internet bro i don't want to hear no one talk about nothing right now too like <laughs> bars motherfuckers say it yeah 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 bro i don't know i don't want to say too much but i'm like bro like i don't know I'm like, I just, I, I like, I don't know. When Kanye said I could give a, a dollar to every person on earth, I felt like I just gave an impression to everybody, every person on earth that was able to see that. Like, if you had your phone open that day, you saw that. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, like real. And it, like I said, like, it's a global language that we all can speak. Whether you have an opinion based on lack of reference point or you have, like, the ultimate reference point in your, like, Carl Lagerfeld and you know what beauty is and what beautiful garments are, like, you know, or your wrath, and you're like, yo, I created this for this exact purpose. And mm-hmm. you know, like when he reposted, when Raph reposted on his actual page, I was like, bro, I'm deceased. Like, I'm good. Like, <laughs> any any negative that they said, I was like, bro, this one positive, like, you know, I was, it, it meant outweighed ninety nine percent of everything. You know what I mean, bro? And it's like, does Like that cosine just cancels it out. I don't know how that works. I do know what PEMDAS is, but I don't think that's how it's supposed to work. Yeah, well, you know, it's like shit cancels each other out. So, yeah, like, (laughs) man, let me let me get like off like a cool reference here, bro. Fuck. Joe's looking here. I'm really thinking like it's parentheses exponents. Yeah, you're in college, bro. Come on. Percent parentheses exponents, multiplication, uh, division, addition, subtraction, subtraction. Yeah, yeah. Addition, subtraction. There we go. Bay Area education, public education. Let's get. Um, Wait. Speaking (laughs) of numbers, um, how was your how was your essence sale surfing this week? Um, For me or for Coos? All the above. Um, they better give me like an extra thirty percent off code because I just put in a good like. 15 bands if not 20 bands into that site so bro five of which are mine 
Salute, bro. Dude, I felt I felt like a big baller because I, I dropped I dropped a thousand dollars on myself and I thought I was like I was getting was, real creative. Did you get like five pieces or so? Four four to five pieces? Yeah, I got some jewelry too. I got I, okay. I got this like Heron Preston necklace that's like half like pearls, half chain, and then like a third something else. Um you'll that's see, bro. Right. You'll see, bro. Um hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I but just did it a was... little recent pickup video on TikTok, bro. And that was like my first one. And I was like showing off stuff. And I was like, I just feel so awkward showing everyone that I just got stuff. But it was like, uh, Nez helped me with it. It was so cool. I was like, she was like, and like someone was like, oh, your, your, your uh, taste is like a chef's kiss. And I was like, oh, I appreciate that. Random guy I don't know. Like, you know um, what I mean? <laughs> random guy I don't know. It's funny how the internet works, bro. Um, mm. I did. I did think it was infuriating. I had to infuriating. That's so powerful. It was infuriating. Yeah, I had to. I had to scroll out through so many fucking Palm Angels bears to like find stuff on the Essen sale. I was like, oh my, that chick was killing me, dude. Now imagine trying to find your girlfriend's uh, Christmas present while looking for stuff for coos and looking for stuff for yourself, mm-hmm. all while trying to make sure stuff doesn't sell out, all within like. A two hour span. I was freaking out at, at one point. What'd you get for Nez? Buying stuff. Huh? What'd you get for Nez? Or she that? In the other room. I can't really say it. Okay. That's okay. Oh. But I got her a fire fit that um, she over here walking. <laughs> 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 no, I got her, I got her a little, you know, got a little something, 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 you know, it's not, it's not done, but it's a, uh, I got her a real nice little garment. And then, you know, I got a little, she taught me how to gift, give good gifts. You know, like she was like, all right, for your Christmas present, she got me a foot massager. She got me a Rick Owens furniture book. She got me candy. And then she got me like, like one other thing. And I can't, I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank, babe. But like, it was so cool that I was like, yo, like even for my birthday, she did the same thing. She gave me like a bunch of things. Like one thing that was like, all right, this one, you know, this is this one's a little expensive, and the other ones were just like filler things. And I was like, yo, I felt like I like had my own party and got my own goodie bag and walked out, and no one else got the same goodie bag for me. But you know, uh, she's playing chess. She taught you how to give good gifts because now you're about to get in your luggage for Christmas. Hey, hey, hey! Uh, no pun intended. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> whoa! No, 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 no. No, that's cool. You <laughs> could like shop like. You guys that don't know, I I date a stylist and like I can't buy clothes for her because like I never know what like like Kara like Instagram DM'd me like a vagina necklace like an hour ago and I'm like, you know, that's something like, she would send. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Something that she would bring up at uh, lunch or dinner and be like, look at this vagina necklace I just found. And I'm like, word. Like, she's like, I feel like you would appreciate this. And I'm like, yeah, maybe Jeremy Scott. Like, <laughs> he, 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 he and Walter, bro, they're so twisted. I love it. They're like my, two of my favorite designers. <laughs> That's what's up. So, Torino, you brought up that, like, you are, like, in the TikTok streets a little bit now. Just a little, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've been, I've been dipping my toe into it, you know what I'm saying? He's a tourist, um, not a purist in the TikTok space. Hey, 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 come on, come on. <laughs> there it is. Nah, okay. he, he, he ain't lying, you know what I'm saying? If he's lying, I'm dying, you feel me? So it's all good. But yeah, um, that's it. <laughs> have, you, have you been keeping up with, I'm like, I feel like such an LA piece of shit saying this, um, but have you, you followed Penelope Disick or you've like been keeping up? I don't let me fill you in let me fill you in so penelope disick is scott and courtney kardashian's daughter i know who penelope is uh based off just like she was like that cute little girl that scott would always be pulling around but yeah yeah Mm -hmm. so she had a tiktok page but like no one knew like she was just like posting like tiktoks like inside like their house and shit and then like eventually her page got big enough and they're like hey yo so anyway now like she and courtney have like this like co like joint page but it's like clearly just penelope because like shit is like misspelled and like yeah you know but anyway she did a room tour and like sick like i wish travis barker like would buy me a drum set um, but going through the closet, I'm like, oh, like shit, like she got someone to drip. But she had like some Ricks, like she had some Ramones. And as both of you know, I got my first pair of Ricks. I guess I'm a tourist and Rick. But I was like, damn, this nine year old had a pair of Ricks before me. She has the same ones that I have. I feel like so cool now. And yours are busted. 
<laughs> you didn't have to say that last part. Nah, <laughs> honestly, bro, if part. you're if your ricks are dirty, bro, it's a good thing. It means yeah. you wear them and you're not and you didn't just get them or it doesn't look like you just got them, you know? No, like, no, true no, they're not dirty. Just they're right busted. Don't have to, they're just busted. Right there. Why do we... <laughs> Hey, look, I, I could pull up a pair of, of, of mine and they're trashed. Like my cargo yeah. baskets, the my yeah, my oh, cargo really? baskets. Or my mm-hmm. not my cargo baskets, my um oh my god, my cargo sandals, they're destroyed. Like but, Bro, but I, wear I, your I, sneakers. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think wearing your sneakers is the coolest thing in the world because it shows yeah. uh character. I can sit mm-hmm. there and point out. Like I got this scuff at this point. I got this smudge at this point. And it's not coming out. Like, you yeah, know what I mean? Character. Like I, it's Tell like, yeah, it builds character. It's like, it shows, it's like almost like a, like a timeline or a roadmap and being like, yo, I had some amazing memories in these shoes. That's why I don't care about when people are like, Oh, like don't crease. crease. Shoes. Oh, I don't know. Gosh. And I'm like, like I've never gone out of my way to buy force fields to like, for a pair of air forces like or to stuff my shoe to get the creases out like i just felt like i was like bro like it just shows people that i've worn the shoes and i'm not one of those guys that just gets them and then puts them in the box after they worn them and then like i don't know i don't scrub my shoe with a toothbrush no more like i'm just like bro like like i'll be pulling up and telling clients like yo like especially the ones that can wear my shoes like Mm -hmm. i'm like bro like they're like, why are these so dirty? And I'm like, because I've worn them. And it, and it yeah. makes it seem like you, who is just Live life. on this. Yeah. Huh? It's just you like you're living life. Literally, bro. And it's like, bro, I don't know. I just feel like even like, bro, clothes are meant like you look weird if your clothes are like worn and pre-distressed and, mm-hmm. and everything. And then you're like, oh, brand new shoes. It's like, nah, bro, just like sell the whole aesthetic. Like, I don't know. I feel like it's like a mm-hmm. whole image that you got to create. You got to take it all the way there. I'm a big detail guy. We know you're a big detail guy. Um, Love that. Love that. Speaking of like fashion and culture, I want to have y'all's opinion on this. I know you'll definitely have an opinion, Joe. So Mm -hmm. Jada and Will, like, you know, but like we can all agree like that they made like the coolest kids, right? Yeah. Yeah, Until I have mine, but yes. Okay. Valid. Valid. That's a great answer. That damn great answer. Um, Like you can show this to you. Yeah, you, no. you can show this to your kid in like fifty years and be like, "See, told you, I called it." I'm not gonna wait that long, damn, bro. I'm gonna be eighty. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Fuck man. Damn here, I'll be seventy. Pemdas. I'll be seventy-eight. My bad. Pemdas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so Jaden Smith drops like a skateboard-inspired clothing line. I think like skate culture is like really cool. Like even like Rick Owens, like his like all like the furniture he makes is like inspired by um, skate parks in Los Angeles. Um, so I think like skate culture is cool, but anyway, so I bought some stuff, um, for me and then also for miles from, um, Jaden Smith's brand. It's called misfits and it's like M S F T S. And there was like this thing and it was like tape and it was just like middle finger tape. And I was like, Oh, like that looks cool. So I bought it and I was like, I'll put it on my laptop. And it came, um, like a few days ago and it's like full size, like a one big strip of tape to like go on your skateboard. It was grip oh, tape. tape. Yeah. Grip, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was grip tape. So yeah. I went and I bought a skateboard in Venice Beach the other day. <laughs> so that way nice. I had an excuse to use this fucking tape. Nice. It's hard. So uh, I thought you were gonna... trying to flex your tape, and I was like, no, no, no flex. But I, no. I have some like Prada tape, and it's like red and it's fire. So, but I just no. don't know how to use for it yet. Bro, I, I that was me. I was like, I was like, do I hang up like skateboard tape on my wall? I was like, that would look fucking dumb. So I've been like busting my ass for like mm. every single day is trying he, to skate. Is he into skating though? Is this what I'm hearing? Yeah, I guess so. Really He's embracing the California culture, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's only because I have this tape, and I was like, well, what else do I do with it? I spent twelve dollars like on it, so I guess I got to buy a one hundred dollars skateboard. Like a skateboard deck, and then put the deck on the wall. But it's like, nah, this is an excuse to get into skating. I just got a skateboard. Your skate bag. Really? Say what? Damn! Yeah. Now I need to get a skateboard, dude. No, yeah, I, skateboard. I've had multiple skateboards. I've had multiple longboards in my life. Um, but High Snobiety, who sent me the tape, um, sent me this subtle uh, flex. This subtle flex. flex. Huge subtle flex yeah good friends good i'm friends, sore good friends. from all um, of the flexing oh bro if, if you want me to do it we can but you know what i'm saying here we are oh. 
I got this sick ass. You, you seen that show Fairfax? Yeah, I want. Mm. Actually, I saw the like oh the trailer for it. I haven't watched it yet though, but I want to. Yeah, me either, bro. I don't think I'm gonna watch it, but they sent me this skate deck and it looks so cool. And I was like, this is for sure going in the, up in the crib somewhere. Um, but mm-hmm. ah, stuff like that. I'm like, bro. I don't. I have like. I have like a bunch of skate decks. I can't skate anymore because I just got bad ankles and yeah. my, uh, you know, my skate career is behind me. Good to know. Hooper. When we, when we hoop tonight, I'll make sure to check your ankles. Hey, you going to take hey. your ankles. Whoa. What? No, like, <laughs> like, like white Kyrie. I'm not going to like sniff them. Whoa. We got to go. We got to end the pod. We got to end the pod. <laughs> That's crazy. Yo, Trino. I'm going to deck your ankles. <laughs> <laughs> fuck both of you yo Torino thank you so much for coming on the pod today thank you guys I appreciate y'all man for having me man it's, uh, it's mad love you know you guys are doing the dope thing and you guys are allowing people to have moments in the tunnel because the t- in my opinion is new runway uh, for league players that can't walk a runway that don't get the opportunity but now they get to flex and show their taste their opinion on fashion their take on and i think it's a beautiful thing that you guys you know have uh created that platform to such a you know an amazing hype so at first i was like confused and then i was like yo this is cool you know like i really do appreciate y'all be highlighting you know what i mean and, and it and it puts other people's brands on too because you know like you know especially ian you know tags the brand especially if i send them you know like i really do appreciate mm-hmm. when uh you know i'm able to like put my homie stuff on coups or you know someone else can put on a up-and-coming brand and give it a new audience you know that's like it's beautiful man so thank yeah, you shout I, out to you thank you so much bro i mean like shit and the page doesn't exist without creative anarchists like yourself so i'll take that i'll take that i'll take that yo go follow survival of the fitted wherever you get your podcasts and then have three of your friends follow the podcast and have three of their friends follow the podcast and then boom It's the League Fits Pyramid.